Uh, once again, you can turn to Isaiah. And we'll pray. Father, thank you. Thank you so much for this day. Thank you for your life that's already moving and turning and swirling in this house. I thank you, God, that healing's in the house, that restoration's in this house, reconciliation is in this house. Father, I thank you for a spirit of reconciliation in this house right now. God, that those that have been lost are being found right now. Those that have been disconnected are being connected right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, that you're doing something in the spirit right now. You're connecting families right now. You're connecting prodigals right now. And Lord, we just thank you that something always happens when we open your word. Something always happens when we preach the gospel. Something always happens when we lean into you, Jesus. And so we have an expectancy today that you're going to meet us right where we are. And that you're going to take us into a new place. We love you with all of our heart, with all of our soul, our strength, our mind. We adore you, Jesus. And we ask you to be with us in a new way. And everybody said, amen and amen. Tara and the group, it's so good to see you guys. We love you. (laughs) You're awesome. Always bring your fire and your life. Uh, I want to talk about uh, adding joy to the journey. Joy. Say joy. Joy. (laughs) Say joy. Joy. (laughs) Look at your neighbor. Say joy. 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 Hallelujah. We talked about this last week and and the importance of joy, specifically the importance of having fun. But I want to talk about this again today, adding joy to the journey part two. And I, I felt like these two scriptures, well, a few scriptures you might hear again, but they're really important, starting in Isaiah 55, and it is verse 12. For you shall go out with sadness. No. <laughs> you shall go out with fear and depression. No. You shall go out with joy, and you shall be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you, and the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Come on, we got some big mountains that are ready to clap their hands out here. But you will be led out with joy. America and church, we will be led out with joy. There's been so much discouragement in our land and discouragement in the church, but God's word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he said that we shall be led out with joy and with peace. Isaiah 61, just a couple pages To the right, it says to to console those who mourn in Zion. Are you mourning today? To give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Isn't that so good? I just love joy. I, I, love, I love joy so much. And, and I believe it should be marking all of our lives as Christians. And I think sometimes we're allowing situations and circumstances and seasons to dictate to us how we're, how we're acting. And, and, but, the, but the scripture is clear. We should be baptized in love and we should have the joy of the Lord all over us. Amen. And so what is the message that we are sending with our faith? Are you sending the message of, I just bit into a lemon and my life is sour? My heart is bitter. (laughs) I'm angry. No, I'm not going to do the (laughs) face. I was doing a funny face last week. Uh, Am I bitter? Am I angry? Am I sour at the world? Or am I joyful? Look in the mirror. Sometimes you just got to look in the mirror. I, I heard this story. Uh, you know, the comedian Jim Carrey, he said he used to look in the mirror every day and he would make these, the funniest faces that he could. And he would just keep making them faces and making faces and making faces until he found the one that was like, okay, that's really funny. But just keep looking in the mirror. Look in the mirror and you're like, ah, that's, that's a bitter face. That's a sour face. That's, a, that's not the face of 
the joy of the Lord. And just get the joy back in your life. Amen. And so last week, what we were talking about is base level joy and how you even just get in the game. Say, get in the game. Most people talk about joy, sing about joy, but they don't even realize that they've, they're not even in the game. Because we're so stressed out, we're so opinionated, <laughs> we're so into this and into this, and, when, and we're just stressed to the max, and we have allowed life to rip us off of joy. And so one of the ways that I have found to get into the game, base level, say base level, get in the game is to have fun. And that's what we were talking about last week, that it is actually so biblical to have fun. And I just want to hit a couple of points that I didn't get to last week, and then we'll go into my next point, which is joy is a weapon of warfare. Hallelujah. Come on. But, but God, number one, God wants us to have fun. Say, God wants us to have fun. And that, it, that will mess with your mind if you have a religious mentality. <laughs> it really will, but it's totally scriptural. Ecclesiastes 8.15, New Living Translation, says this. I read this last week, but I feel like it's super important. And I think it will set you free. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 8.15, So I recommend having fun. <laughs> Because there is nothing better for people in this world than to eat, drink, and enjoy life. That way they will experience some happiness along with all the hard work that God gives them under the sun. Jesus. It's right there. God wants you to have fun. Look at your neighbor and say, God wants you to have fun. <laughs> and not only, that he, 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 not only that he recommends you having fun, it says that there is, underline this in your Bible, nothing better. Nothing better. Why? Because a heart, it, it, I mean, just listen to this. A heart that is truly in the presence of God and a heart that is humbly just seeking the Lord and baptized in joy cannot be hit and penetrated by the devil. I think a lot of people fall into bitterness and fall into offense and fall into gossip and fall into all these things. But if you would just allow joy to be your portion, you wouldn't fall into those traps. God wants you to have fun. And there's a lot of things that we could do to have fun. And, and sometimes you just got to make yourself have some fun. You have to plan some fun. You have to be intentional. What we talked about last week, be intentional with your family. Be intentional with your time. Be intentional with your heart. Be intentional with your quiet time. Be intentional with riding a bike. Be intentional with all these things. And I love what, what Dominic was saying what, about serving because it's also, it's a mentality. Being joyful is a mentality. And, and many times we can come into situations and we have a bad mentality. We're doing this because we have to do it. I'm serving because I have to. I, I'm, I got to get this done. There's a deadline. But no, you get to do this. You don't have to do this. <laughs> you are alive. You have breath in your lungs. You get to do this. You get to come to church. Oh, this is so good. <laughs> come on. So the, the first thing which we just have to remember is that God wants you to have fun. That's just foundational right there. And then to back that up, you've got to remember that, number two, Jesus had fun. <laughs> and there's, you watch movies. Sometimes it's the, the Jesus movies from the 70s and 60s and, eight, and even the 80s. And he's just this very stoic Jesus. And he kind of floats. <laughs> his, his golden hair kind of. I'm like, that's not, that's not the Jesus I know. <laughs> there's something about that Jesus that doesn't resonate in my heart. <laughs> And I watch the movie, you know, I watch the show Chosen, and, and my heart comes alive. And I'm like, that's the Jesus, that's what I picture him like. Relational, laughing, having fun. And, and then I, I read the Gospels, and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Jesus was at a wedding? He was having fun? And the, the, the wedding party's like having so much fun that they don't want the fun to stop. 
And Jesus is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. it doesn't have to stop. <laughs> They're like, no, no, we're just getting started, guys. I'm actually going to turn this water into wine, and we're just, the party's just getting started. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not telling anybody to drink. I'm just telling you that Jesus likes to have fun. And Jesus is into celebrations. Amen. We see this. You, you look at him. He's going to weddings. He's eating with people. I love that it constantly talks about Jesus having a meal with people. Yes. And it was not to rebuke them. It was not to call out their sin. It was to re- have relationship, to talk, to laugh, to smile. Come on. My, my grandfather in Florida, I had, you know, he just passed away a couple days ago. And I was, I was preparing this. And for some reason, I remembered. I didn't know he had passed yet. But I just remembered this thing that he told me many years ago. And, and it was this. If you see somebody without a smile, give them one of yours. <laughs> and because, like, we just need more joyful people. And your joy and your smile is contagious. It rubs off on people. I, I mean, it's like you, you smile at somebody at, at the coffee shop. They're not going to frown at you. They're going to smile. But if you frown at somebody at the coffee shop, they're going to be like, why are you looking at me like that? (laughs) But he went to weddings. He ate. He hung out with people. He did life with people. I I feel like if it was, if the Bible times were right now, you'd find Jesus right in the loony bean. You'd find him where where there was people. You'd find him in the center of town. You'd find him high-fiving and just laughing and talking about things and bringing inner healing to people and physical healing and emotional healing and connecting relationally with people. This is Jesus. It's not this separate moment we have to have. Like we have our spiritual life over here and we have a little bit of fun over here. No, it could all be together. Come on, this is the balanced Christian life. God wants you to have fun, and he proved it by sending his son, and Jesus had lots of fun. (laughs) The Savior of the world had fun. Come on, I'm messing with your theology. And I like this. I like this. Think about this for a minute. Number three, fun makes hard times more bearable. It doesn't take hard times away. It doesn't remove them from your life, but it lightens the load a little bit when you begin to laugh. (laughs) That's why, have you ever been around somebody, or maybe you yourself, you are laughing so incredibly hard. It's like you're like, oh my gosh, I can't stop laughing, but I don't want to stop laughing. And you just keep laughing and laughing and everybody's laughing. And by the end, you just say this. How many, you, you know you've said this. I needed that. Yes. Why? Because you really needed that. <laughs> Why? Because joy is good for your soul. Yes. Laughter is medicine, the Bible says. It's good for your heart. It's good for your mental health, your emotional health to laugh, to smile, to be joyful, to go on vacation, to do fun things. It is good for your emotional state. (laughs) I'm preaching better than you're responding. (laughs) I was like, I'm planning a vacation, Pastor. (laughs) We won't be here for two months. (laughs) This is, it's so important. Fun makes hard times more bearable. The harder life is, the more important it is to laugh. The more important it is to smile. The more important it is to connect with people and enjoy each other, enjoy relationships, enjoy your grandparents, enjoy your parents, enjoy your children. You know, we get stressed out. It's, I heard, you know, somebody said that, my wife said it, but she heard it from somewhere else. It's like you, sometimes when you're a young parent, you get so stressed out because they say this, the days are long but the years are so short. And so when you're in the midst of it, it seems like this is never going to end. I'm going to be changing poopy diapers for the rest of my life. And then all of a sudden it ends. And you're like, I just, I just want to change another poopy diaper. <laughs> I want one more. Give me one more poopy diaper. It's like, because we're out of it. We're out of poopy diaper season. And, and I'm, I'm happy, but it's also like, Oh, that was, I wish I would have just enjoyed it a little bit more. 
And isn't that how it is with all the seasons of our life? Many times we find ourselves complaining in the season, and then we leave the season, and then we want that season. <laughs> Man, <laughs> how can we learn to be content? Like Paul said, I have learned to abound. I have learned to be content in every season of my life. You can cut me down the middle, and I am happy. I'm happy when I have nothing. I'm happy when I have everything. I'm happy when I'm planning a church. I'm happy when I just got beat almost to death. I'm happy when I'm in prison. I'm happy wherever I am. COVID-19, I'm happy. <laughs> Political tension, I'm happy. Because my joy doesn't come from out there. My joy is an inside job. My happiness, my contentment, my peace is an inside job. And nobody, nobody, no demon in hell can take it away. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so laugh a little bit. Just laugh. <laughs> Come on, look at your neighbor and say, you needed that. <laughs> Come on, I need to laugh. Put on a funny movie. Make sure it's clean, but put it on. <laughs> We'll do that. You know, Heather and I, sometimes we'll get, we're, we're stressed or there's different things. And we'll just put on something funny. If, we, if we're feeling like we just don't even have it in us just to laugh, we're like, we're going to make, somebody else is going to make me laugh. So I'll put on a show. I'll put something on because I know that joy is good for me. That's right. That's right. Amen. Proverbs 17, 22, a merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. A merry heart, also a joyful heart, translation says. Amen. That's like medicine. Say so you need, come on, say, I need some medicine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. It doesn't say weeping may come in the morning. It says weeping may endure for a night, but you're going to get really sad in the morning. <laughs> You're going to just be downright depressed in the morning. No, joy comes in the morning. God wants you to have joy. And he wants you to have fun. And so allow yourself to have fun. And I'm not talking about parties. I'm not talking about getting drunk. I'm not talking about doing drugs. I'm not talking about doing stuff illegal and doing, doing things void of God. Like God should be allowed. In, like you should be doing things with this mindset like, if Jesus was sitting right next to me, he would be having fun too. That's right. That's right. And if you're ever doing something where you're like, oh, I don't want him to sit next to me, then you probably shouldn't be doing it. <laughs> right? <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> but he wants you to have fun, but just have some G-rated fun. <laughs> There's lots of stuff you could do around here. And don't make the mountains an idol. That's, right. That's not even in my notes, but I've just seen that happen so many times I love, I love the mountains. I love snowboarding. I love hiking. I love everything that, this, that the mountains have to offer. I love the ocean. I love it all. But I, how many times have I heard this, and maybe you've heard this, you know, people that were so on fire, and all of a sudden it's like, ah, I just, you know, I can't, I can't make it anymore. I, the mountain's my church. You know, I, that, I, I feel more alive when I'm on a peak and, and, and I get where they're getting at, but, but that totally, you know, contradicts all of Scripture. So you can have, like, your moment during midweek or on a Saturday where you can have some alone time with the Lord on a peak. But to say, like, that is church and, and you don't need people and you don't need relationship and you don't need fellowship and you don't need worship, is, that's just hogwash. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> And so God wants you to have fun. And church is fun. And, you know, I just, I love, I, I, when I got saved, I, you just could, you can't, you couldn't keep me away from church. And I just, I just like, I love, I love all the adventures. I love jumping off cliffs in the lakes. I love doing fun things. But, but there's something also super fun about being in God's presence. And there's something so fun about hugging brothers and sisters in the Lord and just smiling together, weeping together, enjoying life together. There's something about it. You know, it's just what makes the church so beautiful and makes the church an unstoppable force. 
It's because we're a family. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I want to change gears just slightly. And I just want to talk about, because last week I, I, I was talking about how joy is, uh, it's a supernatural force. Joy is our inheritance. Somebody say amen. Yes. Joy is a choice. Yes. It's a choice. Right. And we had this amazing word from Brother Justin Bell who, who you know, came on and shared a little bit. And, and it was so beautiful. And it, it just went right with what we were talking about, about joy being a choice. Don't wait for something to fall on you. You choose it. Don't wait for the goosebumps. Just choose to step into it. I'm choosing right now. I might, I feel like I can be, I'm on the verge of being super offended. I'm on the verge of being super critical. But I'm just choosing joy. I'm choosing Jesus. <laughs> Amen. So, number, so I want to talk about today, and, and I was talking about all these different things that joy is for us. And one of those is joy is a weapon of warfare. It really is. And John 16, 33 Jesus says this, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. <laughs> hey, come on, Jesus. He said, these things I've spoken to you, that you would have peace. You will have tribulation in this world, but be of good cheer. See, anybody can be happy when everything is perfect, when, when the bills are paid, when all the relationships just seem like they're awesome, and like every, your, your, your favorite sports team just won, and like everything is just like just perfect. And it's easy to be happy in those moments. It takes, that actually takes no faith at all. But Jesus said, you can actually have joy when all hell is breaking loose. That's right. That's right. And he said, and actually, all hell is going to break loose. <laughs> and so if there's anybody that ever says that it's impossible for hell to break loose on your life, that's a lying spirit from hell. Because Jesus actually said, you will have trouble. You will have tribulation. You will have problems. But don't come under your problems. Be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. We can have joy in the midst of darkness. You can have joy in the midst of sickness, in the midst of a bad diagnosis, bad report, in the midst of, I don't know what's going on. I, I just lost my job. I, I just, you know, pay decrease or my relationships are blowing up. You can still have joy. Right. Amen. Yeah. And it says this. I, I mean, I, I, I love what Paul tells us. And we won't go too much longer for the visitors that are wondering when we're going to land. It's, it's okay. <laughs> but Philippians 4.4. 4, only one more hour. Don't worry. Philippians 4.4 4, <laughs> Philippians 4, 4 says this. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Say that again. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. That's a powerful scripture. And that word rejoice, it actually means to joy again. <laughs> to have joy again. To joy again. Think about that. You, you're going through hell. You're going through COVID. You're going through all the stuff that the world's trying to throw at you and throw out all of us. But, but God said, no, get your joy back. Joy was not just for yesterday. Get your joy again. Rejoice again. Rejoice one more time. Rejoice in your sorrow. Rejoice in your suffering. Come on. Psalm 118, 24, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice. Come on. I will joy again. This is the day. I know yesterday was lousy. Maybe you're saying, and, 
And there's all these things happening, but this is the day. He's made. He's given to me. I have breath in my lungs. I'm alive. I'm going to have joy again. It's my choice. Don't wait for a feeling. Don't wait for a feeling. You'll be waiting till you die. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be lots of awesome feelings in heaven, but I don't want to wait till heaven to have joy. I don't want to wait till heaven to be happy, to not be offended, to not be bitter. I can have that right now. And I'm not going to wait for the goosebumps. I'm not going to wait for anything to make that happen. Because Paul told Timothy, a spiritual son, Timothy was incredibly stressed out. Young pastor, dealing with church politics. (laughs) Dealing with all kinds of stuff. And Paul says, Timothy... Stir up the gift. Remember what was placed on the inside of you from your grandmother. Remember what was placed on your, in the inside of you from your mom. And now, stir up the gift. He didn't say, Timothy, wait for a Holy Ghost feeling. Wait till you shake, rattle, and roll. Wait, wait until this manifestation comes. No, he just said, you have it in you. Now stir it up. Stir up that gift in you. Stir up that joy. Don't wait for somebody else to make you have joy. You get the joy. (laughs) Come on, somebody. (laughs) Get your joy back. (laughs) And stir up that gift. Stir up that gift. I love the, the, the example of this, of joy being such a weapon and joy being such a choice. It's The scripture found in the book of Acts, Acts 16, where you have Paul and Silas. They've just been beaten. They're innocent men. They did not deserve to be beaten and lied about and and drug into a prison, into a dungeon, dropped down to the lowest parts of the dungeon and chained them up. That's messed up. (laughs) But think about Paul and Silas. They could have been like singing Nobody knows <laughs> the trouble I've seen. <laughs> Nobody knows my sorrow. <laughs> no, that was not what happened. They're, they're tied up, and Paul's like, I raise a hallelujah. <laughs> In the middle of, how's it go? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's, he starts singing. In the midst of a horrible season. Hallelujah. It's like, come on, Silas, you know the words. I raise a hallelujah. <laughs> Louder than my unbelief. Yeah. I'm going to sing. You know, and they, I, they didn't sing now, obviously, but, but their heart was in a position of faith. And their heart was in a position of, I'm not going to wait for the goosebumps. Uh, I'm not going to wait for uh, somebody to try and rescue us. Oh, maybe the disciples are figuring something out. Maybe, maybe, they're gonna, uh, maybe there's an escape plan. <laughs> maybe, maybe Caesar will have a mercy on me. No, I'm going to worship and I'm going to have joy in a painful situation. I can still feel the bruises on my face from when that guard punched me in the face. But I choose joy. And I choose to worship. Because he's faithful. And so they begin to turn a bad situation into a glorious situation. By their attitude. By their heart condition. And just said, I worship you, Lord. I honor you. I praise you. They begin to sing. And we know the story. Oh, man, the earthquake shatters the jail and shakes the jail and shakes everybody loose. Come on, your praise is powerful. Your joyful heart is powerful. Don't wait for your situation to change. Come on, joy. say joy again. Say joy again. (laughs) Jehoshaphat, I love the story of Jehoshaphat. And in the story, they were totally outnumbered. And they were going to die. And the Lord speaks to Jehoshaphat and says, put the worshipers in the front. Go out to battle. And the worshipers are like, that's messed up. (laughs) I don't want to be a sacrifice. (laughs) Like, how dare you? (laughs) Like, no, like they, they knew the power of worship. 
And they weren't just, it wasn't a routine. It wasn't just this thing they did. It was, no, we are calling on the God of heaven and earth. We are worshiping Yahweh. And they got in front of the army and they began to worship and, and praise and sing joyful songs. And they got the victory. So what are you facing today? What looks like an impossible situation? You, you feel so outnumbered. Everything is coming against you. And I feel God's just saying, no, put your praise on. Put your joyful face on. Put your joyful heart on. Get joy again and get back into the battle. Come on. Whew. Hallelujah. Nehemiah, we talked about Nehemiah last week. I think this is kind of where we'll land. Um, I love the book of Nehemiah. And, and in Nehemiah chapter 8, we see that Nehemiah instructs Ezra to begin to read the law, read the scriptures to the people. And the people have just been, they've been scattered everywhere, but now the walls have been rebuilt. The city is being rebuilt. They're gathering the people from afar off. And he instructs Ezra to begin to read the law. And it kind of goes through this, uh, starting chapter 8, verse 1. Uh, I won't read all of it right now, but if you want to go back over that, it's a powerful portion, uh, 8 through 9. It's, uh, it's all about that. But what is happening is they're hearing the, the scriptures. They're hearing the word of the Lord for the first time in a very long time. And their response is sorrow. And the Bible says they begin to weep. And they begin to lament. And there's mourning, there's sorrow, there's weeping, there's all these things. And I love this verse because (laughs) chapter 8, verse 10, this is Nehemiah. Then he said to them, after all this is happening, they're weeping, they're mourning, they're lamenting. He says, and just by hearing the word of the Lord, by hearing the scriptures being read, the law. Then Nehemiah says, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, send portions to those to whom have nothing, for this day is holy of the Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So he looks him in the eye, a group of people that are weeping, lamenting, and he says, stop it. Stop weeping and celebrate. And find somebody that has nothing and help them celebrate. Bring them some some fat. (laughs) Big old piece of prime rib or something. Bring them some sweets. Bring them something. Celebration in the land. Why? Because they were celebrating because God had already brought the forgiveness he had already brought the, the restoration. So they didn't need to be lamenting and weeping and sorrowful anymore. It was, that season was over. And he's saying, cross over now. Cross over and come into celebration mode. Come back into joyful mode. And celebrate throughout the land. Hallelujah. Why? Why do we get to do this? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength, he says. The joy of the Lord is your strength. I love that. That. I love that, the joy of the Lord. And the joy of the Lord, you, what does that mean? You know, that people, like, wow, wow, what does that even mean? The joy of the Lord is my strength. Well, number one, it, it means knowing that God is joyful. Amen. <laughs> you serve a joyful God. He's not a wicked ruler somewhere out there in the universe. He is a joyful dad. Yes. Come on. And he's joyful over his kids. And I've always loved that idea. But, you know, now that I'm a dad, I just, you know, I I take so much pride and I take so much joy in my three beautiful children. And I and I look at them and they can like whatever they do, it just brings a smile to my face. And I smile and like he's trying to ride a bike or they're trying to do something new. And I just smile and they look at me and they see dad smiling at them. And as they see my smile, it gives them more courage to keep going. It gives them more strength to keep going. And not just fathers, but mothers too. Mothers give their, you give your children strength. 
and they look to us and they look to the parent and, and we smile and we say, that's awesome. I love you so much. And then they're like, I can do it more. You know? How much more the, our father in heaven? Our father is so excited and so in love with you. And he takes so much pride in us. He takes delight in us. And his smile over your life gives you strength. The smile of God, the delight of God over your life gives you strength in the season that you're in. God delights in you, not because you do anything, not because you perform, but because you're his. He looks at you and he smiles. You're on his refrigerator. You are the picture on his refrigerator. He opens, God opens his wallet, boom, and there you are. Yeah. You're the, <laughs> you are his favorite, but I'm his favorite too, so I don't know. <laughs> he delights in you. He's a good father. Amen. Amen. Patrick, can you come on the, on the guitar? I almost said the keyboard. Maybe I was getting prophetic. <laughs> but I, ta- I ended with these two scriptures last week, and I want to talk about this again, you know, because joy is a weapon. And getting joy again is powerful. Because maybe you've had a season of sorrow, and maybe you've had a season of heartache and maybe you've had a season of just pain and it's and you're like I, I I hear you I believe you but I just don't know how to get there and I want to help you get there right now because the Bible is very clear it says in Psalm 1611 you will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Come on, somebody. And John, I I read this last week, but I want to read this. It's so important to end with the words of Jesus. John 15 talks about the true vine. I am the true vine, Jesus said, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Some of you are going through a season of pruning and you feel like God has left you. But actually, God is more close to you than you've ever felt. God is more close. He's closer to you than you've ever experienced in your life. Just because it hurts doesn't mean He's not there. It actually means He's closer. And so, Father, we thank You for the pruning. We thank you for the pruning. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch could not bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. And so this is, this is truly where it starts. There's so many aspects of joy and there's this, there's this beautiful aspect of just having fun. And we need to have fun. And it's good for your emotions. It's good for your heart. It's good for your soul. And the Bible says, have fun in Ecclesiastes. But there's also this this thing about just getting in the presence of God. And just starting there. And so if you are going through a hard situation today and you've, you've just been discouraged and depressed and anxious, fearful of what the future might hold, I, I just feel like God wants to saturate you today in his presence and in his presence is fullness of joy God wants you to have joy again today so if there's anybody in this room there's no shame there's no condemnation there's only Jesus if there's anybody in this room and you feel like yeah you're speaking to me I just want you to stand up unafraid unashamed Stand, and we're going to worship on the count of three. Yeah, amen. One, you can just stand with me on the count of three. If that's you, you just need some joy again in your heart. You need the Lord to shift some things. You need a, a greater revelation on this season of your life. On the count of three, I just want you to stand. One, two, come on. 
three, stand. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Thank you for new life. Thank you for new beginnings. Thank you that the joy of the Lord is our strength, God. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. I don't trust in riches, I don't trust in man, I trust in a holy God. I trust in a holy God. I trust in a holy Father. I trust in a good, good Father. And God, I thank you that you're smiling over every person in this room right now. And I just pray, God, for a baptism of love in this room today as we worship you. I pray that love would sweep through, let the banner of love be waved in this house. All discouragement leave. All anxiety leave. All fear leave in Jesus' name. And we thank you, God. Let joy return to your people. Let joyful hearts erupt in this house. Hallelujah. And I just want you to do something by faith. If you stood up, we're going to begin to worship. I want you to do the opposite of what your mind says. So if your mind's telling you to be quiet, I want you to sing louder. If you feel like you're supposed to come to the front, but your mind says no, I want you to run to the front. <laughs> if you feel like you need to lay down somewhere and your mind says, don't do that, you'll look dumb, I just want you to do it. And so God, we thank you for freedom in the house. In Jesus' name, come on, let's worship the Lord. Everybody else, you could use another dose of joy. <laughs> Just stand up, let's worship him. Let's glorify Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We love you, Lord. You are so worthy, God. You are so worthy this day. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief yeah oh I raise a hallelujah is a melody I raise a hallelujah heaven comes to fight for me yeah. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm Praises roll up from the ashes. Hope will arise. Death is defeated. He is alive. Oh, he's alive. I raise a hallelujah. Up from the ashes 
Praises roll. 